Hello, welcome, and thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Chris Shelton, and today's talk is about how can we build this resilience for challenge? And Lord knows right now we're being faced with a lot of different challenges, uh, both internally and uh, as well as externally in our outside environment and what we're seeing and what we're experiencing right now. So what is it that we could do? Well, for myself, I've been practicing the ancient arts of Tai Chi, Qigong, and Chinese medicine for over 30 years now. And I can tell you one thing, that Qigong is a simple practice with profound results. And it's something that you can take with you anywhere. And it's something that you can share with other people. So I would like to, I would, so I'd like to take you on a little journey to, uh, for this next 45 minutes or so to talk about, well, how can we utilize the tools that are there in order to build up this uh, tolerance for challenge? So before we get started, I thought we'd do a little centering meditation because this is a talk on resiliency. And, and what, one of the biggest things if you want to become resilient is that you have to go inside. You can't go outside to, to try to force changes to happen. You have to go inside. So we're going to start off here with our feet out about shoulders width apart. Now, if you're seated, that's okay too. Just sit at the end of the chair with your palms resting on the knees, either face down or face up. In both conditions, whether you're standing or seated, you're going to tuck your sacrum underneath and press back the acupuncture point between the left and right kidney called the meat man or the gate of fire. Now, the tip of the tongue is going to gently curl to the roof of the mouth behind the teeth as if saying the letter N, then gently tucking the chin, and by doing so, it presses up on the bath plate or the crown point at the top of the head. And the breath is going to, need to be long, steady, even deep into the lower abdomen. In particular, we want you to pull your breath one inch below the belly button allow for it to expand like a balloon front, back, left, and right. Okay, so we're going to begin by a practice I call pulling down the heavens three times. We're going to inhale, setting this intention for us together today. And thank you so much for taking time out on this beautiful Martin Luther King day to celebrate all the great work that he did for civil rights and as well as acknowledging the other men and women like him that fight for our freedoms, something that we take for granted. All right, so after I get them pulling down the heavens three times, just gently closing the eyes. So allow that breath to come in like a wave of energy. I'm gonna focus first on the front of the body. And I'm going to begin to melt down through the front of the forehead, the brow bone, the temples, the eyebrows, and eyes. Feel what's in front of you. Feel your nose, your lips. From beneath the eyes into the cheeks, this warm oil envelops the side of the face, the front of the ears, from the base of the nose into the chin, enveloping the lips flowing and pouring into the neck and throat. Feel what's there. And if you're just joining us, welcome. We're going to allow for this warm oil then to flow into the chest, the shoulders, the biceps, the elbows, the forearms, the wrists, the palms of the hands, leading all the way out to the And then from there, this warm oil now envelops the entire chest, the flanks of the body, the abdomen, the midsection, flowing through the waist and the groin. Feel what's there, to the thighs, the knees, the shins, ankles, the feet and toes, all connecting, all flowing off deep into the ground. And now feeling just as much as the back as you did in the front, begin to melt down through the back of the scalp, touching every hair follicle, every cell, every tissue. Melting down behind the ears, from the base of the skull to the neck and shoulders, flowing through the triceps and the elbows, the forearms, the wrists, the back of the hands leading all the way out to the fingertips. And now it feels a swarm of warm oil envelops the entire upper back, the mid back, the low back, welling up to the waist flowing through the buttocks and the hamstrings, you now feel behind the knees, the calves. 
calves, the ankles, and heels. And once again, just allow for this warm oil to melt down deep into the ground. And just take a moment to feel your entire body from head to toe. Feeling just as much in the back as you do in the front, as well as to your left and your right sides. Feel what's there. Next, connecting to your higher power, imagine a white light that begins to penetrate to the crown point of the top of the head. Now illuminating your senses of what's going on inside of you, you first visualize and feel your brain. The left and right hemispheres of the brain, the space between the brain and the skull. You feel behind the eyes, the nerves that connect from behind the eyes to the center of the brain, the bones of the face, the blood vessels, the muscles. All the small capillaries, now visualizing the sinus cavity, feel that, and the inner ear. Now the upper palate of the mouth, the teeth, the gums, the tongue, the lower palate, each vertebra from the base of the skull down through the center of the neck and throat. The bones of the shoulders, the upper chest and back, the muscles, the fascia. Now you feel and visualize through the center of the biceps, triceps, center of the elbows, the center of the forearms. Now all the small bones and ligaments of the wrists, hands, and fingers. And this white light now touches every rib and feels the ribs wrap around to the spine on the back. Through the heart, the lungs, the liver and gallbladder on the right side of the body, the stomach and spleen on the left side. You feel your intestines, the bladder, the kidneys, the pelvic bone, the femurs, the bones of the legs, the muscles surrounding them, the femoral arteries, the main arteries that run down, the inner aspect of the groin through the inner aspect of the legs, nourishing the extremities of the feet and toes. You now visualize and feel the center of the knees, the shins, the ankles, and all the small bones and tendons of the feet and toes that allow for this white light to flow down deep into the ground. And from there, just allow for your feet to melt into the earth like you're standing on a sea of liquid energy that comes up about the height of the ankles. And feel the breath, feel your body going inward. And then from here, coming slowly back to the present, going to Finish off here by pulling down the heavens one time, inhaling. And exhaling. Okay, and then slowly batting the eyes open. How's everybody feeling? Okay, so that's such a simple practice that you could take with you anywhere. You know, just by taking a conscious breath takes you out of the moment. So when we talk about this resiliency for challenge and the resiliency for change, because there's a lot of changes that are happening and this is going to continue over the next couple of years, you know, but this is something so simple that you do anywhere. And you know, but it starts off with actually one conscious breath to pull you out. And believe it or not, if you take a full breath, inhaling and exhale, during that conscious breath, it's impossible to think of anything else. So it starts off with one conscious breath, then maybe you add in two or three conscious breaths. So that is something so simple to go inward, especially when our outside environment seems to be chaotic, to be able to help to build our resiliency for challenge and change. Now, who am I? How did I get to where I am today? Well, let's see. Last week we tried to play this video. We're going to try it again today. Let's see if it works today. But this is a story of my old story of who I am or who I was and how I got here. So sit back, enjoy, it's only about a minute and a half long. Here we go. When we break down the word Qigong, Qi is a life force energy that emanates through all living things. And Gong is a skill in which to harness this life force energy. And in this case, in order to improve your overall uh, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. I uh, did a lot of crystal meth in the day, and uh, by the time I was 17, I had my first heart attack from a meth overdose and put myself into Taekwondo as a means to change my path because I realized I was going to end up dead or in prison or both. I started competing right away with Taekwondo. Um, 
did my first competition with, when I got my yellow belt, you know. And um, anyways, one night before a match, I was um, I was kicked in the back, which then dropped me to the ground. And doctor said, Chris, you know, you might be, you know, if you're not careful, you might not ever walk again. My mom was a nurse, and she worked for this amazing chiropractor who. Uh, father, grandfather, brother, sister were all chiropractors, but also she had studied Chinese medicine and homeopathy and uh, she had massage therapists working for her at the time and they wheeled me in there and he was a martial artist and uh, he started talking to me about Qi. Well, now I'm 18 years old and I'm like, yeah, right. So anyways, I had other health problems too. I had severe sinus problems, digestive problems. I had uh, slight case of OCD and uh, I had nothing to lose. I started taking these classes and back then, this was over 25 years ago, nobody was practicing Qigong or very few people were practicing Qigong in the United States. And I kid you not, after about six months of doing these practices every single day, you know, you just wake up one day and you're like, wow, when did I stop living on the Sudafed and the Actifed when I stop living on the Tums and Kaopectate? You know, you don't know when it changed, like you can't, you don't, there's not a quite, there's not a pinpoint date but you know that there was a change. And I thought, wow, if a movement, gentle movement and uh, guided meditation could create this much change inside my body, then there must be something to Chinese medicine. So indirectly, because of the Qigong, uh, that instructor I was training with supposedly was teaching Chen Stao Tai Chi. And uh, Chen Stao Tai Chi is, is a martial art. It's the oldest system of Tai Chi. Uh, a lot of people, when they hear of Tai Chi, they just think it's what old people do in the park. And um, so yeah, so what happened was after I broke away from him and then I found uh, my Sifu who I'm still with to, today, Tony Wong, who teaches, really teaches the traditional Chen Tai Chi. I mean, the, we're directly connected to Chen Village in China, uh, in the Hunan province. And uh, I started competing with Tai Chi in tournaments. I've been in Inside Kung Fu Magazine a couple of times. Uh, uh, competed at the national level as ranked 10th in the US at one point. So yeah, so I dabbled with that too. and then. And then finally with Sound Show, uh, with, with Kung Lee's uh, fight team, so introduced to Sound Show. Thousands of years ago, before man started to uh, evolve in the, and lose their spiritual centers they, and, and, and pay more attention to the ego, they were enlightened enough to understand how these internal organs functioned. They were enlightened enough to understand that there are channels in the body and then there are actually points in the body and that these vessels and channels and these organs correlate to the seasons and correlate to different foods that you eat, correlate to different colors. And so that is the foundation of Chinese medicine is recognizing when the organism itself and its internal environment is not much different than the external environment. So just like there could be a discord in your external environment, whether wise or in your personal life, uh, that's also can happen on the inside. So when someone says to me, even if it's a disease that, that I've never heard of before, uh, and they say, can you help me with it? My answer is yes, because I believe that anything is possible. Okay, so there you go. So yes, that was my old story. And because of that childhood, believe it or not, uh, uh, having growing up that way, that actually, I didn't know it at the time, but that actually built up my resiliency for challenge and uh, is one of the things that I think is the reason why I have the success today, you know, because I have a choice. We all have choices. You know, we all have trauma in our life and we can sit there like I could have sat there and continue to blame my parents for the neglect, uh, for the occasional abuse and such. And the reality is, is that we're all individual souls on this planet meant to live out of a life purpose and to be able to develop ourselves at a deeper level to get closer to God, to the Tao, Source, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, that was my old story. And my message to the world is, is that if I can change, you can, choose, you can too. It becomes a choice of just changing the direction of the sail. So our time together today is that I want to give you tools. I want to give you the tools that I continue to use daily, weekly, in order to cultivate myself, in order to improve myself, and also to deal with the day-to-day -day stresses that are going on because I am not exempt. A lot of people think that just because of what my wife, Priest and I do for a living, that we just sit at home, eat vegetables, and meditate all day. 
uh, we do have a blessed life, but I am faced with the same, we are faced with the same stresses and traumas. We are also affected by what's going on in the media and what's going on with our, this current situation of the shutdown, and etc. But these are the simple tools that we utilize in that in order to build our resiliency, to ward off inflammation inside the body. And guess what? When we're able to do that, our mental emotional state becomes imbalanced because the leading cause of death and disease, and I'll dive into this more later on, is actually negative emotions, stress, and trauma. And right now there's a lot of fear and shock going on. And guess what? That creates a whole kind, all kinds of havoc inside the body. So our time here together, I already gave you one practice and then I started off with that center and balance meditation, talking about how we start off with a conscious breath and taking it into two or three conscious breaths is enough sometimes to pull you or snap you out of a situation and be able to give you a tool to be able to have this resiliency for change. Okay, so what I want you to go ahead and do is I want you to pause here and I want you to feel or take a moment. I actually I should have asked this question before I ran you through the meditation, but how are you feeling right, right now? Just on a scale of one to 10, uh, one being the worst off and 10 feeling fantastic. Um, take a minute to note as to where you are right now or maybe where you were before you did that center and balance meditation. And we're gonna come back to this later on. But our short time here together today is that I want to give you clarity of what burnout is, how to tell what burnout is, and how that chronic stress can actually lead up to burnout and create disease inside the body. Plus, I'm going to continue to give you, I'm going to give you at least a couple more simple tools and practices, and also an opportunity, a couple opportunities if you want to dive deeper into these types of self-regulatory practices to improve yourself, which then, guess what? If you improve your own vibration, it then starts to change the vibration of the planet. So how do we build a tolerance for challenge? Well, it takes practice and it takes daily practice. You know, in order to make or create any kind of change in, a, in ourselves, we have to take a step. And, you know, they talk about it, for example, in the 12 step program. The step number one is first admitting that you have a problem. It doesn't just mean with alcohol or drugs or sex or spending money. It can mean that, you know, maybe you, you have an addiction to thinking, you know, that is a form of addiction too, or maybe you have an addiction to worrying, or maybe you have an addiction to creating drama inside your life. So the first step is admitting, you know what, I have this issue. I have this issue going on. I can't stop the stinking thinking. How do I get myself more centered, more balanced, and pull myself you know, back inside? Because so much of us, and myself included, always focus on what was going on on the outside. So early on, uh, when I was a teenager in my you know, early 20s, when I was first starting Qigong, you know, I saw those health changes happen. And they didn't happen overnight, but gradually they changed. The reason why they gradually changed is because of application. Application. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a Napoleon Dynamite, Napoleon Dynamite, <laughs> Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Dynamite might have said it too, but Napoleon Hill, um, actually said, you know, perseverance is key for success. So for any type of success that you want, maybe you want to be able to calm your mind. Maybe you have some type of illness that you're battling with. Maybe you do have some depression or maybe you do have some uh, past trauma or physical pain that you're dealing with. So the first step is, is perseverance. And the first step is saying, okay, I have this, but I'm not going to identify with it. Meaning if you're somebody with lupus or Lyme disease, I'm not going to say my lupus or my Lyme disease. I can say, you know what, I have a temporary imbalance and my goal is to change that. And believe it or not, building this tolerance for, for challenge um, actually helps to reverse those types of diseases, believe it or not. Okay, so what is chronic stress? Well, first of all, we have the stressor. Now, a lot of times it's a stressor, like right now, it's a stressor from the outside. Now, sometimes, and I have to be honest with you, because this is from what I've taken inventory on myself, is, is that my own internal thought processes um, have created my outside environment of what was going showing up or going on in my life. But right now, for example, we're seeing stressors from the outside, okay? Uh, we're having reactions to that. Some people are getting uh, angry. Some people are frozen in fear. Uh, some people are building up all this type of resentment. And then what happens is, is then it starts, it, it starts to wear on the body and on the internal organs and on the nervous system. In particular, that sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight part of our nervous system. It is on all the time. And that part of the nervous system was not designed, when God designed us, to design the human organism, was not designed to be on all the time. It was only meant to be on 
But if you're being chased by a bear, if your house was on fire, or in a time of famine or something like that, that's when it's supposed to be on. But it's not meant to be on. But as a result of it being triggered all the time, it guess what? It reduces our ultimate health because guess what it creates? Inflammation. Yes, that big I word, inflammation. And inflammation can be anything from Crohn's disease, colitis, cancer, uh, pneumonia, uh, you know, you name it. Uh, talk about lupus, Lyme disease, fibromyalgia. There's so many inflammatory diseases that <coughs> show up as a result of this wear and tear. And then guess what happens? If it continues on, then there's this increased sensitivity that continues to unfold. Then organs really start to shut down or become dysfunctional. And then our nervous system is, is on such high alert, we may start to notice, well, guess what? I have an aversion to bright light. I have an aversion to smells. I have an aversion to being touched. I have an aversion to sounds. You know, these are all, these are all warning signs. These are all things of burnout. And these are all things that your body's knocking on your back door, screaming at you, saying, listen to me. We need to change this because if we don't change this, our health is going to continue to decline. Okay? So, <clears throat> dealing with burnout, step number one is to recognize what are the warning signs. Well, on that last sign that slide, I talked about what are some of the warning signs. Some of the other warning signs, too, are maybe things that we take for granted, like constipation or diarrhea or diarrhea with undigested food inside the stool or uh, insomnia, waking up and not throughout the night or not sleeping well, uh, bloatedness, you know, excessive gas. These are migraines. These are all things. Uh, eye tremors, floaters in the eyes. These are all signs that, okay, we need to recognize, am I reaching burnout? And in Silicon Valley, where Priest and I were born and raised, you know, we are seeing it at younger and younger ages because, you know, in the high tech community, there's, you know, these uh, men and women, young men and women, also engineers, um, or whatnot, they are being forced to work these long hours and these long days, and as a result, they start to achieve the burnout. So then what can we do? Well, we need, once we recognize it, we want to reverse it. By reversing it, what we're doing is we're trying to control the damage that's being done. You know, when I'm seeing a 20-year-old or 25-year-old with tremors, um, that's not a good sign. You know, that's not a good sign. That's the body's nervous system saying, oh, we need to repair this damage and seek some type of support. Now seeking support, what's great is, is that, you know, you could have your Qigong practices. I would recommend uh, uh, someone to talk to. There's other systems out there uh, that I, I've worked with, with and like NLP, Neural Linguistic Programming, EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, which is tapping, which is also based on traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture. And what happens is if you're doing stuff like this, like tapping or do practicing Qigong, you actually build this resiliency for stress. And guess what? Your physical, your mental, emotional, and your spiritual health gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So dealing with burnout is so important to catch it. Catch it. And it's never too late. My attitude is never too late. So maybe you um, got stuck in a, in, a, in a place of severe depression or you have severe inflammation and chronic pain inside your body. It's never too late. And like I was talking about in that slide, that video, who am I? I had the, those severe digestive problems. I had the severe sinus problems. I had upper GI, lower GI, I lived on antibiotics, you know, and I also had OCD. OCD was uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, and these were all this, as the side effects of this burnout that happened because I was in fight or flight mode during my childhood, okay, and into my teens constantly. So by building up this resiliency and doing these internal practices, guess what? You can actually change it. So um, Jim Rohn is actually uh, probably one of my favorite uh, keynote speakers. He has a lot of uh, books on tape or live recordings in front of live audiences, as well as books on, uh, on, financial, on financial freedom, uh, character building, and all these uh, things to uplift our spirits and us as a human being. And one of the things that uh, Jim Rohn said is, and it's probably not his, his line, probably came from somebody else, but he, he said it so articulately. He said, you know, the same wind blows on us all. It just is the, it's just the direction of the sail which determines the outcome. Okay, so going back to my childhood, my teenage years, yes, I could have, I could have kept that sail going down that same path, repeating the patterns that my parents had, had done and probably repeating their parents' patterns, you know, because it's a cyclical, right? It begin, it's born, it's, it begins, 
to become part of our DNA as an expression. So, but I chose to change the direction of the sail. So believe it or not, by changing the direction of the sail a little bit is enough to change the outcome. And in Chinese philosophy or Chinese astrology, they actually will say that at the, the four pillars, at the time you're born, the place you're born, the hour and the month, all three determines your fate or your, or your luck or, disfort or misfortune. Okay, but they say that once you start to do an internal type of practice like Qigong, start to change your vibration, you can no longer tell or dictate where that life being is going to end up because now you change the vibration. Now you actually are changing uh, the DNA. So if you're somebody that was born into a family of heart disease or diabetes, you know, if you change how you emotionally respond to situations, if you change how you uh, uh, react to things or your diet, um, or your living environment, then it's been proven that you don't have to get the disease. You don't have to get the illness, okay? Because when we look at diseases, when we look at diseases that arise, now, <coughs> heart disease, you'd figure with the scientific advancements and such that uh, some of these diseases would be on the decline, but they're not. They're, they're on the rise, and this is so shocking to me, and especially right now, a lot of these diseases, like we're going to get into it in a second here, but uh, like depression right now and suicides is on the rise right now. The heart disease, the negative emotions that affect the heart, and this is the difference between Western medicine and Eastern medicine, is that Western medicine, they just talk about stress creating disease or creating um, illness inside the body. But they don't break it down to specific emotions affecting specific internal organs of the body, which then create dysfunction and shows up as disease and death. So the heart is affected by the negative emotions of overexcitation, too much joy, mania, abandonment, loneliness, and lack of joy. But the heart is also the emperor empress of the body. It takes the brunt of all the emotions. 7.4 million people. When we look at diabetes and cancer, believe it or not, that's actually a spleen and stomach dysfunction. And we're seeing younger and younger people developing diabetes. Yes, uh, poor diet, uh, processed foods, too much sugar. Uh, Sugars that has become the new tobacco. There's actually a, a Netflix documentary on that, which is fantastic. How sugars and everything, like even yogurt, you go to buy low-fat yogurt, you really have to look at the label because of the amount of sugar that they put in there because they took out the fat. But anyways, so improper diet, but emotions of over-intellectualizing, thinking too much, demand for nurturing or anxiety and worry, or maybe you're somebody that just gives and gives and gives and gives. Well, that guess what? That depletes your stomach and your spleen chi, and this creates diabetes and cancers. Not only cancers, but we're also talking about uh, fibroids and cysts and tumors, all right? Um, other things too, like prolapses, when the organs fall out of place, blood uh, disorders like anemia. This is also as a result of this, these emotions. So 1.3 million people, or 1.5 million people. The next one is lung diseases. Well, right now we're seeing lung diseases, but Prior to this whole event, um, hundreds of thousands of people each year die from pneumonia, just as a matter of fact, or, or the flu. People, hundreds of thousands of people die just from the, what we consider the regular flu each year, each year. So this is not, what we're dealing with right now is not anything new. It's something that, that has gone on for many, many, many for, well, since the beginning of time, because viruses and bacteria have, have and fungi are things that are part of our human evolution. They've been with us for since the beginning of mankind. But anyways, we're talking about lung diseases like besides pneumonia and bronchitis, but like asthma. How many deaths each year actually people dying fl from uh, asthmatic attacks? So this, this number is on the rise too, 3.1 million people. Now this is an interesting one, nephritis, which is kidney disease. Now this should be on the decline, but instead it's on the rise. And I know in the Bay Area, we've seen more and more dialysis companies show, pop up because more and more people are having kidney disease. Well, yes, grant you, uh, uh, once again, going back to our diet, poor diet, uh, too many prescription medications. Uh, my mom ended up passing away from MS. She struggled with it for about 25 or 30 years. Uh, like I said, she was a nurse. And one of the things that they think that caused the MS was she used to take a lot of prescription medications. Um, but also, too, if you look at the amount of immunization shots that's recommended by the CDC, between newborn and age 18, it's 64 shots that's recommended. Our systems are not meant for that. 
are not meant for them. This is why, this is my personal opinion, we see higher cases of autism. But guess what? This attacks the kidneys. This has to filter through the liver system and the kidney network. But also, too, it's shock. It's what's going on in our environment, too. It's being able to have access to, to news and, and, and situations that are shocking to our system. Burning the candles at both ends. Um, having this state of fear. Right now, people are in the, this state of fear. They're frozen in fear. 2.5 million people are, are dying from kidney diseases. And it's just outstanding to me, or astonishing to me, that this is happening. This should actually be on the decline, but it's not. It's on the rise. So see how these emotions attack different organs and shows up. And by the way, those kidneys are the root of all your other organs. You know, uh, the time of conception between God, your parents, as well as your environment, it predetermines your kidney well. How big is that battery going to be? How well are you going to fight off disease? How well are you going to fight off stress? You know, this goes back to the strength of the kidneys. Now, this last one here, strokes. And I would also put on, on here too is aneurysms. We're seeing younger and younger men and women dying from strokes and aneurysms. Once again, yes, if you're not eating the right diet, too many greasy, fatty, fried foods, uh, drinking too much alcohol, smoking too much, uh, those types of things will definitely contribute to you having a stroke. But chances are, if you're eating the wrong kinds of foods or you're drinking too much or you're smoking too much, it's because there's something emotionally going on inside. And the negative emotions that cause people to, to use food as, med, as, uh, as a comfort or use alcohol as comfort or, or smoking as a comfort is because they have too much resentment, too much old anger, too much frustration, defensiveness, hatred. We're seeing a lot of hate out there that's, that's being sparked up and being stirred up by certain people. And this creates strokes. And this number, 6.7 million people, and I'm not kidding you, we're actually we're seeing more and more people come up uh, to the clinic um, as a result of uh, somebody in their family just passed away, uh, their son or daughter just passed away from this, this number is on the rise. So this emotion of anger and frustration and resentment and old anger is killing people. Now, don't get me wrong, anger is actually a good emotion. In fact, all those emotions of worry or, or uh, grief and those types of things are good because they're a barometer of what's going on. But it has to be utilized in a proper manner. Like anger needs is the emotion that if you want to create positive change in the world, stand up and fight for the underdog, you know, uh, get out of a bad situation, create something creative like dancing, drawing, writing, painting, you know, singing, whatever, planting, gardening. These are all like positive expressions of utilizing that anger, that frustration. Okay, so some of the simple benefits of practicing Qigong is that it can actually help to reverse those conditions. And like I talked about in my story, I have these health problems. Now, probably if I didn't make the change and, and if I wasn't introduced to Qigong, I probably would not be here today. Now, grant you, doctors told me back then, especially after I had my second heart attack, that because of the damage that was done, you know, one day uh, I just may not wake up and because they can't see some of the damage that was done back then. But anyways, for the most part, these diseases can be reversed and can be pr uh, prevented. There's uh, more than one a uh, student of ours that's taking the Qigong teacher training courses who has had an autoimmune disease who has actually rectified and fixed the autoimmune disease themselves just by doing these simple practices. So when we practice Qigong, believe it or not, it actually increases this tolerance for challenge and this tolerance for change. So um, one of my Taoist masters, he, he's a 38 generation Taoist and Chinese medicine master. Uh, his name is Master Hua Jingli. His sons, Dr. Dao and Dr. Mao Jingli, run the Dao Wellness Center in Santa Monica and, and in Pasadena, California, as well as Joe Song University. I have a lot of tremendous, I have a tremendous amount of respect for the family because of the depth of their knowledge and the richness of their wisdom. But Master Ni says, by practicing self-cultivation practices like Qigong, one develops a sensitivity to the energy circling within and around the body. So guess what? You become aware. So the Yellow Emperor Classics of Difficulties, which is a foundational Chinese medicine textbook, talks about diseases that arise, how our outside environment affects our inside environment. So what does that mean? How when it, let's say for right now, um, we're in the winter months, but it's hot and sunny where we're at right now, hot and sunny, it's like 86 degrees. It should not be this hot and sunny right now. But the diseases that then show up a season or two seasons later, that um, as a result of the seasons being out of season. So the Yellow Emperor's Classic of, of Medicine or Difficulties talks about how we're connected to our outside environment and how we're influenced by that. 
But one of the things that the Yale authors said was that the superior doctor is one that can prevent disease before disease sets in. The idea of you practicing Qigong, especially that center and balance meditation that we did at the beginning of this talk today, is a simple meditation for you to, number one, get out of your head and back into your body, but also for you to be able to feel your body. What does that mean? To where you could feel when one of these organs are out of balance before it shows up as disease. That's the whole idea here. You know, in China, it used to be that you paid your doc doctor when you were healthy. You stopped paying your doctor when you got sick because that meant that they weren't doing enough or doing the right things in order to keep you healthy. The whole idea here is for you to become this, your own superior doctor and become so aware of your body that you can sense this stuff come in before it shows up as disease. Because we do have the strong mind-body connection. And uh, going back to the heart, the heart takes the brunt of all the emotions. For example, you know, if you get angry at something, what happens? The heart races and weakens your liver and your gallbladder. If you become fearful about something, your heart races, weakens your kidneys and your bladder. If you're worried or anxious about something, what happens? Your heart races and then weakens your stomach, spleen, and your pancreas. Um, if you were grieving something or, or disappointment or carrying around shame and guilt, your heart hurts and then weakens your lungs and the function of the lungs. So there is a strong connection between the mind-body and what happens is, is that the more aware that you become of your emotions, you start to wake up. And you actually, actually, and this is what I do, is I ask myself, is this an emotion that I want to have? For example, if I have a situation that upsets me, I ask myself the conscious question. So I do an inventory and I check in with myself. Is this something that I can just, or is this something that I need to say something and then let it go, okay? So having this consciousness and being, being aware that there is a direct mind-body connection. And Qigong is a simple practice to help that connection. Have you ever heard the saying that maybe you were dating somebody or you had a, a, a love that wasn't the healthiest in your life and you say, you know, my heart and my mind are telling me two different things. They're not in alignment. My heart wants, wants this, but my, my inner self is saying, no, run for the hills. Um, <clears throat> The reality is, is that Qigong is something that, that could actually help to align that because in, in Chinese medicine, we actually have a saying that the heart houses the mind, which houses the Shen, which is your spirit. And years ago, a priest and I had the fortunate opportunity to sit in on a lecture with Deepak Chopra and Eckhart Tolle, probably two of my uh, most favorite and inspirational uh, uh, speakers on consciousness and the ego. Anyways, this is at the Shrine Auditorium in downtown Los Angeles, and uh, uh, there, there was two chairs that they're sitting in. There was a table between them with the, the vase with a rose in it, and Deepak Chopra told the sold out audience, he said, I want everybody to stare at this rose. Now close your eyes. He asked the audience, can everybody see the rose? But everybody said yes or nodded yes. He said, now open up your eyes. He said, nowhere inside your brain is there a rose. So what does this mean? Your brain is just a reflection of your reality. The reality is, is that your consciousness is here. And there's a group of scientists in Santa Cruz and actually in Felton, which actually uh, are proving, the group of scientists is called HeartMath, and they're proving that, for example, when you give a conscious hug to somebody, both hearts actually move closer together. So for years, scientists were trying to find where is our consciousness. They couldn't find it here in the brain. And what we're finding is, is what philosophers and Chinese medicine philosophers, uh, Ayurvedic uh, philosophers um, have said for, or, and even uh, Persian poets, Rumi talked about how this consciousness is here, not up here. So Qigong is a simple way in order to bring us back into this heart-mind connection. So I ask you, what fills your bucket? Because this is something so important. And I was an ABC reader for Project Cornerstone where I would go into the, uh, <clears throat> I would go into the elementary school and it was from K through sixth grade and we would have to, we would have to go ahead and put together a curriculum uh, on a specific book. And one of my favorite books is um, How to Fill Your Bucket. And actually I have a copy of this book in our lobby in San Jose for my adult patients because this applies to us adults. What fills your bucket? Now sometimes we're around people that are bucket dippers like you're, uh, you know, uh, you're, uh, maybe you have a friend that's a secret bully or, or maybe you have a family member that just draws from you emotionally or, and maybe financially, maybe spiritually as well too. So sometimes you have to learn to how to put a lid on that bucket. 
once again, doing, taking an inventory as to what is working for you. Who is working for you? Who's working with you to help to uplift you, to help to uh, support you? And what's great about uh, Qigong as well, too, is that you can become part of a community. We have a community of healers, of teachers, as well as the Qi Club, that where you get to be a part of a community that wants to not only fill their own bucket, because it starts with number one first, being able to take care of ourselves first, but then fill the buckets of other people. So... <clears throat> The reality about stress reduction is, is that our minds are powerful things and we do not fully use our minds. In particular, we, or our brain, we fully do not use, in particular, the right side of our brain, which allows us this opportunity for manifestation, to co-manifest with God, which is what they also call as free will, um, our ability for ultimate health and success. So something as simple as you saying to yourself every single day, I am getting better and better and better and better. That actually comes from the Silva technique. Something like that, saying that every single day can actually will change the physiology. Your cells actually start to listen to that. And once you apply these practices of Qigong and like conscious breathing, talking to yourself in the mirror, maybe saying I'm beautiful, confident, and strong. I choose to only have positive thoughts, feelings, and emotions. These simple practices actually will help to build this strength um, and this resiliency for challenge. And guess what? When that happens, the inflammation resides or declines. And then what, guess what happens? Then you end up with the quality of life that you and everybody else deserves to have. So one of my favorite practices as a keynote speaker, uh, there's three practices that I give. One, we already did it. That is starting off with the conscious breath. And uh, two is shake it off, like this talk here. You know. Uh, we are the only animals or mammals on land that does not shake it off when something happens to us. You know, if a dog is happy to see you or is upset, that dog will shake from head to toe. You know, uh, if two ducks get into a fight, the fight lasts for a few seconds. And what do they do? They, they swim away and then they flap their wings violently. Why? Because they're conscious enough, they're aware, aware enough to know that they have this vibration inside their body. If not, then those two ducks would be swimming around the pond waiting for Bob to come around to pop them in the beak again. But no, they don't. They, they let it go. Us humans, somebody upsets us, cuts us off on the freeway. Uh, we have a family member that upsets us, a boss that upsets us. You know, maybe one of our children have said or done something that upset us. And we have this angst and this vibration. Well, guess what? That angst and vibration turns into inflammation. And those diseases that I was talking about two slides or three slides back, that's where it starts to show up. Because I see it over and over again where we have a, a, a physically fit person come in uh, who's eating well and who is exercising yet is still dying of chronic artery disease. It does not make sense. So we have to look inward as to what else is going on. Yes, you want to look at your diet and such, but putting yourself on a restrictive diet sometimes may actually uh, further contribute to disease. So the second takeaway practice I like to give here is shake it off. And especially right now when you're watching the news, uh, I recommend keeping that on the minimum. Also, Facebook to a minimum, but uh, you read or see something, somebody posts, and it upsets you, it stirs something inside of you, I want you to shake it off. And you may have to shake it off throughout the day, but guess what? At least you let go of that vibration, which then reverses the process of disease. And the third practice that I love to give when I give talks is the healing sounds. Now, there's different healing sounds for all the internal organs of the body. My favorite healing sound is the heart sound because, like I said, the heart is the emperor empress of the body. It does dictate how much of an emotion is expressed or suppressed. So it's something very simple to do, and you can take it with you anywhere as you inhale. Letting the emotion leave like a dark cloud going several feet away from the body. As I inhale, imagine this pink cloud filling up into the chest. And then as I exhale, so the way we make this into a conscious practice is, is that I want you, if you are experiencing something right now, maybe some anxiety, maybe some loss or grief, um, maybe somebody you know did pass away from this COVID virus, I want you to feel that. I want you to visualize that person, feel them. And as you inhale, I want you to imagine this pink cloud filling up into the chest. And then as you exhale, and the cool 
cool thing is, is that you can do this underneath your breath. So let's say you're in public and some of these emotions are starting to stir up for you. So um, you can do the sound underneath your breath, inhaling. And the way that we work on past trauma is then I would ask you to focus, for myself for example, I would focus on some of the neglect or the abuse of situations. Who was involved? What was the environment? Were there any smells or sounds? I'd pull that into my psyche, into my present moment, and I'd feel that. And then as I inhale, uh, allowing that circumstance to leave. So unlike conventional therapy, where sometimes they just pick off the scab and the wound and the, is still there, I'm asking you, yes, to pick off that scab, but by doing these practices, by being, making it mindful, connecting certain situations in your life to the practice helps to change the vibration and reduce inflammation inside the body. Okay, so um, just taking a minute to know, I'm curious, how do you feel now on a scale of one to 10? Um, how would, did you feel at the beginning of the, of, the, of the talk and how are you feeling now? So just take a mental note, you can put it in the chat if you want to, but I want you to, kind of, I want you to start to notice the difference. Even doing a few of those ha sounds, how did you feel? And did you shake it off with me? How did that make you feel? Did you run through the center and balance meditation with me? How did that make you feel? So see, it's something so simple that you could do in order to benefit change and create change inside your body. So for myself, this is a silly picture of me, but for myself, I was a butcher for 21 years. Now I've been in clinical practice now in Chinese medicine and Qigong Tai Chi for 20 years, but I didn't know that this was going to be my life purpose. Um, even though I did a lot of drugs and uh, um, you know, I don't remember much of high school in particular, I was a very driven student. I still graduated with a B average. Um, I started working to become a butcher when I was 15 and a half. Uh, I did my AP studies in art for college. Um, I also went to school part-time, starting my sophomore year, uh, they sent me to high school, or at the high school then a bus would pick me up halfway through the day, take me to an adult education uh, uh, school, where then I got my Class AC brake license, my license for overhauling engines, cylinder head reconditioning, tune-ups and electrical systems. So, you know, I figured if I didn't make it as a butcher, I'll be an artist, if I don't make it as an artist, I'll be, I'll be a mechanic. You know, being a healer and an instructor was nowhere on my radar. I did not know. Though I do enjoy medicine, I've always enjoyed medicine, and like I said, my mom was a nurse, and uh, I used to read her nursing journals, and oh, was very fascinated by the human body. So science is really fascinating to me, how our bodies function and move. I mean, we're such an inc incredible organism. But one thing about what I'm doing today, this might be something for you. We have, we have clients that are saying, you know what, Chris, um, I realize that I'm just a number in my job. And if you're somebody that wants to help to create change within yourself and help to make positive change in the world, then I have, I have a recommendation for you, and that is to become a Qigong teacher trainer yourself because it is something that is uplifting and it's something that helps to create the change that we need to see right here, right now. So, brings us to the slide here, what is your life purpose? You know, Dr. Mao, talking about Dr. Dow and Dr. Mao, a few years ago we were taking some CEU classes at uh, Yosan University and um, uh, Dr. Dow had asked a question. He said, how many people have, uh, have found their life purpose or how many people are, are happy with their career? And you know, there's doctors and other lawyers, other uh, business people that have taken the class. There's only several of us that actually rose our hands. And Dr. Dow said something that was pretty profound. He said, before you come into this life form, you sign a contract with heaven that you are to find your life purpose. Because when you find your life purpose, this is how God, this is how the Tao then is able to express itself through you, okay? So when we find our life purpose, you know, we have our own, uh, uh, create our own dream job, we get to help others, we get to spread love and happiness, and really we get to spread love to ourselves. It's so important. So there's two ways here that we could go. One thing, if you're not already on the Chi Club, if you're not already a Chi Club member, Every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we have the Chi Club, which is, we started during the beginning of this pandemic, and uh, we started off as called the Chi Challenge, and we realized that, for, that, uh, that how many people that it was positively affecting throughout the world, especially people that were lo locked in isolation. So this is every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 8 to 8.30. You have, these, you have access to these videos every week. 
and you're part of a conscious community. So whether you join life or maybe you're working, you can't watch the video so later on, you still get to become part of a conscious collectiveness of changing our vibration. And our planet, everything around us is a vibration. Now the next thing that we could go ahead and do is that if you're already a Qi, uh, a Qi Club member is the Qigong Teacher Training Program. Now I grant you, not everybody wants to have a career in becoming a teacher or a healer like myself. Or maybe you are, maybe you're somebody that's a, a therapist, a counselor, maybe you are a doctor or a nurse, or maybe you're somebody or a chiropractor and you want to dive deeper in understanding how your body functions. Well, the Qigong Teacher Training Course, what it is, is that we dive deep into ourselves. So this course is not meant for everybody to become a teacher. What it's really is, is the training course for us to become the teacher of ourselves. What does that mean? To, for us to know ourselves at a deeper layer because the way that this course is set up and we consider it one of the most comprehensive Qigong teacher training courses out there because I'm not just teaching the practices oh because it feels good. I'm teaching you the practices because, and also gently educating you on how it is that your body functions how it looks like when these emotions show up as diseases and all the various types of diseases that we have. And when there's a discord between these internal organs, how that manifests. So this is something that is profound because this is something that really helps people change their life. And then I know for myself, even if I didn't end up with this as a career, it changed my health, it changed my life because it forced me to dive deep into myself. Now, it wasn't always comfortable, I'm just being honest, not always pretty and comfortable during that process of peeling away the layers. But if you're tired of repeating the same patterns, if you're tired of uh, what appears to be externally uh, affecting you internally, when a lot of times, like I said earlier, we see that it's our own internal self that's showing up stuff in our external environment, then this is a great opportunity to increase your vibration and understand how your body really functions. So, <clears throat> when you, if you join us for the teacher training or you join us for the Chi Club, you know, you start to, well, especially if you join us for the teacher training, you really start to, uh, force you to really start the self-cultivation uh, practice in order to build a, a challenge, uh, a tolerance for challenge. You'll have a foundational enough practice that maybe you could, even if you don't want to teach, you could help your parents, you could uh, maybe go to your uh, kids' elementary school, well, maybe not right now. Well, it depends. I know some private schools are allowing um, in person, but uh, to teach this because we find that kids, especially kids that are autistic, benefit and respond very well with Qigong practices. And, you know, uh, if you don't want to become a teacher, but if you do want to become a teacher, then it's something that's very power a very powerful gift that, you know, you can't even put a price tag on that, okay? So as we wrap up here, um, we're just going to, um, you know, once again, just really reiterate that this is something for all of us. And what I love about Qigong is that it does not discriminate against age, does not discriminate against gender, uh, religious or spiritual belief structure. It's meant for all people. So even if you're a paraplegic, or you're somebody in a wheelchair and you can't move, believe it or not, the meditations actually, I believe, are much more profound than the movements are. But this is meant for everybody to change the vibration of the planet. And did you know that Qigong is actually the foundation of acupuncture in traditional Chinese medicine? Okay, so we have a brand new level one Qigong teacher training uh, course. It's starting March 1st. And right now we're doing a 50% off. Normally this course is about $4,000 and uh, we have it down for $19.95. And Jim Rohn, one of the other things that he had said too, he says, if you have a book uh, that was on how to prevent heart disease, and the book was $29 or $30 for the book. He said, you know, yes, you paid the $29, but you're paying for the printing, you're paying for the publishing, et cetera, the ink on the paper. But he said that kind of knowledge, you cannot put a value on. So when we look at ourselves, and I look at myself and most of our clients uh, that come to us uh, either in Los Angeles or in San Jose, and even we have some people that are paycheck to paycheck, they say, you know, my health, is the most important thing because yes you could have all the abundance in the world which is something that i really promote is 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 you having abundant fruitful life but really having your health is the ultimate thing because you know we're supposed to live 120 years and that's dying a graceful death and not suffering until the day that we die okay so uh sign up by sunday and receive those uh big savings and you know, as I wrap up here, here's a group of our teacher trainers. Actually, two of the, uh, these young women, uh, Christine as well as Yvette, um, are out there. Uh, they started their own teaching program. 
um, event story. She's the second one, the brunette, pretty brunette from the left or by right, I don't know, wearing like the blue shirt. Anyways, um, she had an inflam she had, uh, I believe lupus it was, right? Or she had, she had an, auto oh, no, I'm sorry, she had RA. She had RA and she was bedridden with uh, four kids. And she came to one Qigong class that was given for free by Open Space Authority. Open Space Authority was sponsoring us to go out into uh, these parks and uh, teach Tai Chi and Qigong. And, um, and it was free to the public. Anyway, she came to that one class, felt the benefit from the one class, started doing my 30 days of Qigong that was, that's available still today on YouTube for free. And she signed up, she became a level one teacher. Um, then she did level two and now she, I mean, she's amazing. She uh, um, has a, a new career that she's established for herself and her RA is gone. So she's a great testimonial to just the profound effects of what Qigong can do to you or for you. So anyways, um, thank you so much. Oh, Lulu. Hey, say hi. Lulu? Hi. Okay, hi, puppy. Okay, so anyways, from our home and our heart to yours, from our dog to yours, if you have any questions, please reach out. And I hope that there are things that I said today to help to spark some interest. And if maybe if not for you, maybe for somebody else that you know, like, hey, you would benefit from this, um, please take advantage of it. If this, I think that everybody definitely will benefit from the, uh, um, from the Chi Club because it's something that helps to really increase the consciousness of the planet. Um, but also, too, this Qigong teacher training program is meant for everybody. So please reach out. Thank you once again for joining me today and for this last hour here. And until next time, have a blessed Martin Luther King Day, and I will see you later.